Hello and welcome to our podcast for April, which is going to be focused on intention three from my book, Meditation with Intention. And intention three is focused on something that we all need to master, which is the theme of I am not my thoughts. Letting go of the inner critic can be incredibly difficult for all of us, especially in these challenging and chaotic times. I myself came to realize through the practices of meditation and mindfulness that the inner judge and harsh critic of others and myself served no place in my mind or life any longer. My new path of self-love and self-awareness started to replace the harsh inner critic. However, as we all know, old habits die hard. And I am incredibly vigilant as it doesn't take much for a negative thought to pop up and then the judgment kicks in, leading you down the endless rabbit hole. You can successfully begin to start changing your internal negative narrative by offering yourself three things that are an integral part of a daily mindfulness practice. And I do these myself. The first is self-love. The second is compassion, and the third is non-judgment. Through these mindfulness practices, I have effectively learned to slow down my mind and adopt a more serene and non-judgmental outlook to the best of my ability, and quite honestly, this differs every day. And that's when, if I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job in any given day, I return to focusing on that non-judgment component and the compassion so that my new attitude can be filled with greater love and compassion toward myself and others through the ups and downs of my daily life. So these are very useful tools to navigate ways in which to stop the constant cascading thoughts, often negative ones, from arising. There have been times in our lives when we could be in the most idyllic place, that beach in the Bahamas, watching that sunset in Hawaii. Yet regardless of our amazing location, we cannot escape from ourselves and our thoughts. It really doesn't matter where we are if we are chained to living in the prison of our own minds, with or without the exotic Instagram-worthy backdrop. Now, the average person has more than 60,000 thoughts every day. No wonder we feel anxious and like we live captive in the prison of our own minds. Our thoughts are repetitive and often negative, which feeds that background of anxiety and sense of constantly being ill at ease. And this has no doubt become magnified over the past year. If you feel that you will never be able to change your way of thinking, no matter how hard you try, you are not alone. Many of us feel that we will never be able to change our mindset or successfully impact lasting change in our lives. It is very easy to become trapped in the cycle of constantly replaying the past or worrying incessantly about the future. The past has occurred, and the fact is that even what happened five minutes ago is unchangeable. Therefore, we must learn ways to accept our past and fully embrace our journey, both the negative and positive experiences that have gotten us to where we are today. When I reflect upon my past, there is not much I would change. There are some things I definitely cringe at, but it was all part of the journey. Meditation and mindfulness help us to look at ourselves through the lens of love, compassion, and non-judgment and embrace ourselves wholly on our journey through life. Part of this is being able to look past fear-based thoughts. Our inner critic and fear-based thinking can keep us stuck. Meditation can help us move past these blocks to find our strength and purpose. We all have a strong mind-body connection. And I realized myself in 2015 after being rushed to hospital for emergency surgery after suffering acute appendicitis that I was poisoning myself with my own toxic thoughts. This was largely due to my inner unhappiness with my work situation. And what I realized was that my job on the surface was great, earning a six-figure salary and being in a leadership position for a software company that afforded me the opportunity to travel and live a comfortable life. However, this career path was not my passion, nor what I wanted to do. 
Each day drove me deeper into self-doubt and misery as I questioned what my true purpose was and how I was going to be able to fulfill this underlying yearning for more in my life. And this is something that many people may be resonating with. I went on this journey where I was able to transform that toxic thinking into finally leaving the job that was not serving me and starting my own wellness business almost six years ago now. But I wouldn't have been able to do that without the practices of yoga and meditation and mindfulness that I share in this book. And it's really important when we are succumbing to negative thinking to focus on our strengths. We have many strengths, but we often don't give ourselves credit for the positive things that we have achieved in our life, our strengths, our positive attributes. We tend to often focus on the negative, and that's due to the internal habitual negative narrative through evolution that we all succumb to. A negative attitude and feelings of helplessness can create chronic stress in the body which affects the body's hormone balance and depletes the brain's chemicals required for happiness, resulting in longer-term damaging effects on the immune system. We may think those posts on social media about positive vibes and letting go of negativity are annoying, but they are far more true than people give them credit for. The next time you see one, read more about it, as you may be pleasantly surprised by the impact adopting a more positive outlook can have on your mind and life. I decided to let go of all of that internal negative chatter and instead began to visualize what life would be like running my own wellness business. And so it's really important that as we work on letting go of our internal habitual negative narrative, we also focus on opening ourselves up to possibilities in life and knowing that every single moment in our lives offers us the opportunity to experience lasting joy from within. And it doesn't mean that we don't feel the fear. It doesn't mean that we don't succumb to negative thinking. It simply means that we start to become what is called in yogic philosophy, the sakshi, the eternal witness of the mind, that objective observer, observing the thoughts coming in, and observing the thoughts going out. Tests will come along in our lives. That is inevitable. Sometimes in our lives, we may feel that we are being tested beyond our capability, beyond what we feel we have. And that's when it's really important to embrace meditation and mindfulness and know that you have within you the strength and courage and fortitude to overcome any obstacle in your path. When we get caught up in the rat race, it can be difficult to see this. So that's why it's really important to focus on finding balance in our lives and knowing that everything that has occurred in our lives has been an opportunity for us to learn more about ourselves Learn more about how we react to things, how we engage in external dialogue, internal dialogue. The vibration and thoughts we put out are just as important as the effort we put in. Our thoughts will either reap rewards or end up attracting the opposite to what you seek, as often can be the case in our lives. Where our energy flows, our intention goes. And this is a subtle but very important factor to be aware of. If you are constantly focused on what you don't want in life, that is what you tend to attract. Instead, try shifting your focus to what you do want and you just may be surprised what starts coming your way, especially when you are connecting to source or spirit from a place of authenticity and true soul calling without an attachment to specific outcomes led by the ego and that false sense of self. Part of the process of learning to calm our minds is accepting the duality of life and that there will be good times and there will be bad times. Eastern philosophy covers this concept teaching that suffering is an inevitable part of life and one which we cannot escape. 
There will be gains and losses along the way, and accepting this truth without becoming stuck in a rut during the bad times or becoming overly elated during the good times is key to finding balance in our lives and minds. Otherwise, we could feel as though we are on a roller coaster with constant highs and lows that can become very draining and taxing on us physically, mentally, and emotionally. So it's really important that we focus on creating that balance, that equanimity within. As if we don't, we're constantly on the roller coaster of life. And that can appear fun with the constant exhilaration of highs and lows. But after a while, you begin to crave that sense of stability and balance in your life. And if we continue on the roller coaster, it ends up wreaking havoc on our sense of self-worth, which can take a long time to repair and rebuild. Your greatest responsibility is to love yourself and know that you are enough. You don't need to be accepted by others if you are able to embrace and accept yourself. This is real self-love and there is strength and beauty in this powerful truth. So our exercise for this month is going to be focused on a five-minute journaling practice. So you will need a journal for this exercise. You can start creating more inner peace by validating your own needs and wants and giving yourself the love and acceptance you so eagerly desire. Make a list of areas in your life where you are feeling unworthy or lacking. Once you have completed your list, spend five minutes in silence, drawing your attention to your breath and focusing on inner contemplation of what has come up from this practice. And when I say focusing on your breath, you can be seated with the eyes open or closed, focusing on taking a deep inhalation through the nose and an audible exhalation through the mouth. And you can do that as many times as you need to, to reset, refocus, regroup, and really get your mind into the present moment where you can give all of your attention fully to the journaling practice. Then you can start to address how you can change these things by journaling, how you can transform your actions, thoughts, and words around these issues. Then you can journal some areas in your life where you can offer more love, acceptance, and non-judgment to others. This is a way for you to take your practice of mindfulness into your life to serve others. Very often what we don't realize when we judge ourselves harshly and critically is that we judge others in the same way. The more compassion that we can give to ourselves authentically, the more compassion and non-judgment we can offer to others. Once you start to be led from within, which this list will help you navigate, you can begin feeling more self-love and peace, enabling yourself to let go of your internal negative narrative and ceasing the constant comparisons to others or the excuses for why your life has not gone the way you wished it to. You can start committing to making the changes you journaled in order to let go of the negative chatter and embrace more love and acceptance from within. This is an exercise that you can do as many times as you need to. I would encourage you to do it at least a few times a week because ultimately happiness lies within. If we reflect, we can see that it is often through our most difficult and trying times in life that we are able to embody our spirit and find the strength we need from within. This is what gets us through those darker times, knowing that there is a divine or universal presence in our lives guiding us forward and taking us toward the light. The difficulty is remembering to look up to see the light, however faint it may be. When we feel as though we are unable to control our continual negative thoughts, it's really important to remember that fact. In these instances, the light can feel very distant and sometimes we may feel that we are surrounded by complete darkness and that we cannot see the light at all. The point we have to come back to is that if we are constantly looking outside of ourselves for happiness, we will never find it. This is a hard truth we need to stop and come to terms with. 
If we don't, we can spend our lives going from relationship to relationship and clinging to friends and family to give us the happiness we desire. We can search for this happiness in our relationships, careers, and material possessions or with travel and experiences. I have done all of the above, quite honestly. And I can tell you from my own learning that all of these things can certainly contribute to our sense of self and offer us temporary happiness, but it does not last. True happiness and peace must come from within, regardless of our external circumstances and situation. I hope you enjoy this month's podcast and exercise. Wishing you a blessed month ahead.